friends to another Madden video. Welcome aboard. Yes, you great students out there making sure you're getting your math content. Good for you, I say. And what do we have here? We have, yes, it looks like lesson 5.6. Wow, we're just cruising through chapter 5, man. Surf's up, dude. Get on your board and... Yeah, okay, Mr. Wara, the surfer dude thing. Gotta let it go. That's right. You gotta let it go. Okay, and our topic for the day. <clears throat> what do we have here? We have divide decimals. Yes, it's what we've been doing a little bit here, I think. Dividing a little bit of decimals. I think maybe we did whole numbers. Anyway, our essential question. This is what focuses us, guides us through this lesson. This is our purpose. <laughs> I just need to know what we're doing. Yeah, okay, Mr. Wara. We are going to answer this question. How can you place the decimal point in the quotient? Some good vocabulary there. Keep in mind, I know many of you know, but the quotient's just that answer in a division problem. And of course, a decimal point is very, very crucial where we place that because it changes the value of our number. Anywho, let's get started where it says, when you multiply both the divisor and the dividend by the same power of 10, the quotient stays the same. What an important math concept. So we have our dividend here, like our example. We have six, and when it says six divided by, and if the divisor is three, we get two. So six divided by three equals two. <laughs> this is easy, yeah, and guess what? Now if you multiply six by 10, look, you see we have 60. If we multiply three by 10, right, we have 30. So 60 divided by 30, it's still two. Huh, that seems magical. Okay, but then when you multiply it by another 10, look what happens. We get 600 divided by 300, and our answer is 2. So as long as we multiply both the divisor and the dividend by the same power of 10, the quotient stays the same. Okay, and do we have another example over here? We do. Yeah, 120 divided by 30 equals 4. Now they're showing if you multiply by 1 tenth, okay, that's 0.1 to both the dividend and the divisor, look at that, we still get four. 12 divided by three equals four. We can keep doing that again. So this important concept, I guess they thought was so important, they put it before, unlock the problem. That's right, my friends. Yes, it's real world, baby, real world problem here. We have Matthew has, looks like 72 cents. He's rich. <laughs> I remember when I was a young tyke and I had 22 cents. No, just kidding. He wants to buy stickers that cost 8 cents each. How many stickers can he buy? Okay, and do we have a picture of the stickers? We do. Look at those cute little stickers. Oh, man, we got a football, skateboard. Uh, look like, it looks like a race car of some kind. Oh, a hockey stick. Ooh, I like hockey. <laughs> okay. Mr. War, can we get back to the problem? Of course we can. Okay, let's get back to the problem here. Now it says multiply both the dividend uh, and the divisor by the power of 10 that makes the divisor a whole number, then divide. So I'm not sure what we're supposed to do here. First, it's telling us what to do here, but over here, cameraman, what do you multiply hundreds by to get a whole number? Okay, I guess it's the same question it's asking, and here it's kind of already given us the answer. There's a hundred. You see, because if you look closely, very closely, you'll see that each number, both the dividend and the divisor, are in the are in the hundreds. We have seventy-two hundredths and we have eight hundredths. Therefore, if we were to multiply both the dividend and the divisor by one hundred, something magical happens. Yeah, we get a whole number. Oh, so let's write that down. So first let's answer answer the question, what do you multiply hundreds by to get a whole number? Yeah, 100, okay, as it told us here in blue. 7200 divided by 800 is going to equal, in this case, actually it's going to equal 9. If we multiply those both by 100, we get 72 divided by 8, which is also 9. So Matthew can buy 9 stickers. Pretty cool, eh? I thought you might like that. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. That's right, my friends. This is all about dividing the divisor and the dividend by the same quantity. So making connections, so explain how you know that the quotient 72 hundreds divided by 8 hundredths is equal to the quotient 72 divided by 8. Well, we talked about it. One fact we just learned was both the divisor and the dividend were multiplied by 100. In a sense, we didn't change the value of either number. 
this is multiplying, but it's the same concept that even though I multiply that by 100, as long as I do the same thing to that other term, in this case, you know, the dividend, then I haven't changed anything, okay? I hope that makes sense. Alrighty then, there we go. Woo, yeah. Now let's move on down. Now let's just try this. Divide 56 hundredths divided by 7 tenths. Now my first observation right away is I noticed that on our last problem, both the divisor and the dividend, or if you prefer, the dividend and the divisor, were both in the hundredths. However, this one, we have the dividend in the hundredths, we have the divisor in the tenths. Hmm, okay. Multiply the divisor by a power of 10 to make it a whole number. Then multiply the dividend by the same power of 10. Okay, I think we can handle that. So 7 tenths times 10 equals 7. 5,600 times 10 equals, ooh, don't be fooled, 5 and 6 tenths. Now, it says that we can divide. Okay, come on here. Let's see. It shows how that decimal place moves. So I'm going to put that decimal place up here first. They always say to do that at the end. I like to do it first because, honestly, I might forget. So it's just better to already have it there. So 7 can go into the 5 holes there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make that 56 tenths. Then we can see how many are there. So 7 will go into 56 though. 8 times, if I know my multiplication tables, that's 56. And of course, that leaves us with 0. No remainder. And again, since we do have that decimal 8, we want to make sure we put that 0 in front. Hey, hey, it's Page Master. Well, thank you, Page Master. You do such a great job. Now, yes, Sherry hikes on the Pacific Coast Trail. Oh, the PCT. Yeah, I know about the PTC, my friends. Anyway, she plans to hike three and 72 hundredths miles. If she hikes at an average speed of one and two tenths miles per hour, how long will she hike? Okay, let's carefully take a look at that. Now it's asking us to estimate. You know, a lot of times, you know, we, 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 we come across all these new math terms or concepts and always trying to remember what's the best way to estimate, especially with decimals. It can be confusing, I know. Well, I think that there's no really absolute correct way to do it, but a good guide is, I would say, always try to, in this case, you have the highest place value. The highest place value is the ones place. So it just makes sense to round to the nearest whole number, which is the ones. Whole number is the ones. So three and 72 hundredths rounds up to four. And one and two tenths then will round down, we say, to one. Okay? So if I were to do an estimate here, I'm going to say that then that four divided by one is four. That follow that? Did everybody get that okay? I hope so. So step one. It says multiply the divisor by a power of 10 to make it a whole number and then multiply the dividend by the same power of 10. So in this case here, we have multiply by a power of 10. If we multiply that by a power of 10, yeah, we remove the decimal, which is kind of nice because the decimal, again, always moves to the right, okay, when we mu multiply by a power of 10. And then we have 3 and 72 hundredths. Well, we're going to multiply that by a power of 10, and we're going to end up with 37 and 2 tenths. Now step 2 says write the decimal point in the quotient above the decimal point in the new dividend. Yay! It told us to do it first. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's great. I like that. And then 12 will go to 37. Oh, I love that one because 12 times 3 is 36. Nice to have that handy. Okay, I subtracted here. I always seem to put my subtraction sign after I subtract. I don't know. Just a habit of mine. Of course, we're going to bring down that other digit there because we haven't done anything with the 2 yet. He's been just sitting over off on the side. Feeling kind of lonely. Anyway, so 12 goes into 12. Well, that's really nice. I mean, don't have to think too hard on that one. Ooh, I subtracted again. So 12 minus 12, 0, no remainder. We end up with 3 and 1 tenth. All right. Now, step 3 here says divide. Oops. Mr. Wara, you did the whole problem on the wrong step. You didn't read the instructions carefully. <laughs> Who is that guy? It's my alter ego. Oh, yes, you know what? It did, uh, yes, you know what I did. I just do it, and I start doing the problem, and I didn't see step three. So, can I just say <laughs> this is going to be the same thing? 3.1 is going to be up here. This is 36. 
Of course, this is 0, or no, this is 1, 2, okay, and then our 12, 0. Okay, same thing. The only thing that's missing is my little arrow that I always draw to show that it's coming on down. Okay, so Sherry will hike. It looks like 3 and 1 tenth hour. Okay, anyway, here we go. It says to generalize. Describe what happens to the decimal point in the divisor and in the dividend when you multiply by 10. Yes, it's all been about multiplying by 10. Well, I think I actually mentioned this just in passing on the last page, and that is, yes, each time the decimal point moves one place to the right. Now, question three says, explain how you could have used the estimate to place the decimal point. That's a great question. Well, our estimate up above, the four, they're saying, how could that help us? Uh, or how could you have used that estimate to place a decimal point? Well, well I could have used the estimate for uh, to place a decimal point after the three to show three ones and one ten. And I would only say that is because we know that our answer had to be pretty close and the value wouldn't have been 31 it would have been three because we wanted to have it close to what our estimate was. Our estimate couldn't have been off that much if we did a good job. So that's how I would answer that question. Okay, last section. Let's take a look. It says, try this. It says, divide. Check your answer. Okay. I like how it's moved us along to the point of dividing. So I'm always looking at my problem first now because I don't want to accidentally do a step before it comes. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Uh, multiply the divisor and dividend by, in this case, uh, I'm going to say 100. Okay, there's my 100. How I would know to multiply by 100 is when I am dividing decimals, I'm going to multiply by a power of 10. I don't think this uh, lesson show this, but in order to get that decimal out of the divisor, that is kind of a priority. So even if this number had been uh, let's say zero point. If the decimal point, if the decimal point had been here, remember we were really concerned about getting that decimal point out of the divisor when we do long division. And so two places over means that decimal place is going to come over here. Okay. So multiply by 100. So let's go ahead and do that. Well, 14 goes into 19. I'm glad they give some nice easy work because that works out really nice. I'm going to subtract there. There we go. 9 minus 4 is 5. That's 0, so we don't do anything. Our 6. I always draw my arrow. It's just a little reminder. You don't have to put it there. Okay. And then 14, you would think it would go into 56 nicely. Will it? 56. Isn't that right? 16 carry 4, 5. Yeah, it goes in there exactly. 4, 56. And we end up with 0. All right, let's check our work. So with the 14, a decimal on this point just means it's 14. We can put the 0 here but not needed now. Let's say we are taking our, this is our divisor, and we're going to div multiply that now by the, you guessed it, the quotient, which is really kind of weird because it's like 14 and 14. Isn't that kind of weird? That is weird. Kind of spooky. I don't know. I don't think it's that spooky, Mr. War. All right, so we have 16. Carry the 1. I have 4 and 1. That's 5. Okay, that's one partial product. Now, the next part, part, I have to put in that little placeholder. Yeah, we have to put that placeholder in there because we're going into the tens. And now we have four because one times four is four. And then one times one is one. And now here we have our adding six. We have nine. Well, the digits are correct. That's a good thing. Aha. But this is where we learned in a previous lesson, right? Yeah, we have to go ahead and remember, we have to multiply. You think of this two different ways. Okay, you can multiply this by 100. This is the way I think of it as. When you multiply by 100 here, we need to make sure that we do the opposite down below. We need to do the opposite here because this is the factor and this is the product. That's different than what we were doing with multiplying the divisor and the dividend by the same amount. This here is in the factor. So now we have to divide 100 to make it correct back into the product and that means two decimal places because when we divide by a power of 10 the decimal place always always moves to the left yes 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 <laughs> okay this door so we end up with our one and 96 hundreds yes and it's the correct answer and yes like the music Woohoo! yeah yeah again my friends our math video has come to a close Thank you again so much for joining me on these wonderful math videos. Just taking a casual stroll through math wonderland. No, not, not, not. Mr. 
you are if you're trying to think of something funny. It didn't work. <laughs> I don't know. I made myself laugh, but that's not saying a lot. Anyways, my friends, my jungle friends, thanks again. Now, live long and prosper.